Hello there, Katies. I'm Curry. The vacuum to watch. Who else? <laughs> and it's time to start a big build project with my DD12 Dirty Dozen uh, Guitar Amplifier. This is the aluminum stock that I'm gonna make the chassis um, out of. Then the first part of uh, building this amplifier would be the mechanical thing, then the fabrication, the, the whole metal working, making those uh, holes in, um, in the aluminum stock. Making the transformer holes, making the tube socket holes, making the potentiometer and socket holes. Lots of stuff. So, without further ado, let's get to the bench. So we're here at the bench and let me grab some tools for marking the, the, the holes. Got a rough design uh, of how I want to build it. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look. So uh, this is basically the layout of, uh, of, of the chassis uh, for the amplifiers. I've got the power transformer, the output transformer. So the output transformer would be placed here. Then the power transformer would be placed here. And then it leaves us with uh, some space for for vacuum tubes. Uh, I'm going for free ECC84 to EL84 ECC83, I meant, and maybe an EZ81 and a filter cap. So, this is gonna be roughly my idea of how to place those tube sockets and the front panel layout. Starting with a pair of uh, <coughs> quarter inch uh, input jacks next to each other. They will be placed uh, 20 millimeters apart. That's what I measured uh, when I uh, when I did some tests. Then uh, we'll go with uh, six uh, rather than five. Uh, chicken heads placed uh, 35 millimeters apart let me show you 35 this is gonna be this is gonna look like this need two of them And then, uh, then the last uh, items on the front panel would be the pilot light, a new old stock uh, Soviet one. All those Fender jewels, <laughs> they can, they can just go home compared to this one. <laughs> Uh, by the way, 
wanna show you something. One moment, please. Let me apply some 6.3 volt from the power supply. <laughs> That's gonna look radioactive. <laughs> And uh, yeah, still uh, it got some knobs and uh, the power switch and the pilot light. The space on the chassis would be tighter than Ethel Granger's laces. Then on the rear panel we got uh, the output jack and. Uh, an uh, effect uh, send and return jack and then we would get uh, the, the power power connector and a fuse holder got this power connector here And as for the fuse holder, should be somewhere around uh, on the bench. I might go with the GBIZ, uh, but I might also go with a vintage one. I'll find it when I find it. So. Let's get going with uh, with the with the tracing for all those parts. First of all, I will have to make uh, make traces for all those holes. Also, uh, also needs to. Cover, uh, cover the the mantle for protection. I do it by using a uh, painter's uh, masking type. The sides are there. Let's get a soft felt uh, felt pen. And it will be time to do some measurements. I use this so it's uh, four centimeters wide. I'd like uh, all the elements at two centimeters. Making a line in the center. Went off. So I will need to be careful. So it is time to mark the the holes uh, for the sockets and for the potentiometers. 
the first socket is two centimeters uh, from the edge. Next one is two centimeters from from the first one. Then uh, three centimeters, and we've got the knobs three and a half centimeters apart. mark the diameters and let's place the pilot lamp uh, two centimeters from Maybe make it two and a half. Make it two and a half. And let's place the switch uh, at least three centimeters, if not uh, three and a half. I think I would go with. Uh, with three away from the last uh, last knob <coughs> let's measure the diameter on the, the pilot lamp holder it's 16 it's 16 so the front is traced trace the back remembering that uh, on this side we've got the power transformer rather than the output one And the design would be roughly something like this. And start by making the center line like um, like on a, on that one. So, 37 and a half uh, from the output transformer, I would get the output jack. From, from the end. So this is the one. 52 and a half millimeters away from this one I would like to have the effect loop let's uh, let's check uh, how it corresponds with uh, with the transformer given that the transformer will be placed uh, something like... Uh, Something like five millimeters from the end, given that this is seventy millimeter divided by two, it would be thirty five plus uh, plus five, so I would have to do it thirty millimeters. <laughs> 
happens. Think twice, measure one. Think three times, measure twice and cut once. That would leave us with placing the effect loop uh, a little bit further than uh, I initially thought. Let's make it uh, let's make it six centimeters uh, apart from the output jack and uh, two centimeters uh, apart from each other and. Uh, Let's get a move on with uh, the opposite side. So, uh, starting with the fuse holder, make it 3 centimeters, and this is gonna be 18 millimeter. If I use the vintage fuse holder, and then the interesting part uh, comes here. For the IEC C14 uh, power connector, I'd like to place it. Uh, hmm. Not too far, but not too close. Let's place it 25 millimeters, and uh, I will take the rest from here using a uh, little template that I made. I cut it out uh, of the insulation used in, uh, in motors or transformers. So three millimeter holes uh, for attaching the power socket. And uh, 11 millimeter holes for for the for the jacks. And then let's try the power and output uh, transformers since then the chassis is uh, it's nine centimeters wide and uh, the power transformer there is a little consideration because I've got um, the contacts on the power transformer, I will have to make a hole that uh, that uh, can accept uh, those parts because I can't uh, take them out. So it will be it will be seven centimeters wide rather than uh, the, the windows of, uh, of the bobbin that would be 43 so uh, if I uh, if I wanted to place the power transformer like this I would have to cut uh, all the way here that would um, weaken the chassis um, there would be just uh, not enough metal left uh, to, to the end so uh, I will have to place the power transformer like this and let's place it uh, a centimeter away from from the end because it's placed uh, a centimeter away from uh, those edges too. So uh, let's make it symmetrical. I 
know this is positioned and I will make those holes mark them on the, on the chassis careful not to move the template Our transformer is here. And it is time for the output transformer. I'd like to place it uh, five millimeters uh, away from the end. And that would be this. And as for the tube sockets, uh, I think I will hold on before, before I mark them. Let's put those bands where those transformers would, would end up. I guess that... Uh, I could do one line uh, around here. Same for the output tunes. The inverter tube would end up somewhere here, and then we would have uh, the preamp tubes. I think I would uh, place them roughly off the center. I would also have to make some place for the Capacitor. Of course, uh, there's also a home consideration, but uh, marking the, the tube sockets, uh, this is gonna be another story. So, then the thing I would like to do now would be marking all the, all the places where I, where I want to drill the holes with an automatic uh, center punch. Let's change the lighting here. Slightly different.
always do several punches in one spot because uh, this uh, automatic center punch is pretty much worn. It's uh, it's got rounded one up uh, flattened uh, at the end. It uh, it couldn't really do steel, but it's fine for aluminum. I will make those transformer holes uh, by cutting them out uh, with, uh, with a uh, metal saw. It's gonna take some time, but, uh, but it will work. So let's move on to the rear panel. I also need to consider the distances, uh, but it should be fine. Oh, I forgot about one thing. This is the... This is the plate voltage side, uh, then the heater voltage, and this is the mains. So the mains uh, would end up here. But uh, I also need to draw the I will need to draw the cutouts uh, for this. First centimeters here. it will have to go 13 millimeters uh, beyond uh, beyond the edge Yeah, that would be the cutout for the power transformer. And time to make those punchings for the back panel.
And the front panel. And in order to make the perpendicular lines on, on the chassis, I will just use uh, this uh, angle, uh, angle tool. Make it 25 millimeters from from the mounting holes on the transformers. And make it 20 or 25 from, uh, from each uh, of the edges. I'm gonna decide well, what to choose. So, here I would get an uh, ECC or EZ EL84 Maybe I really should space them a little bit apart Yeah, I guess uh, that would be that would be this. So we need uh, one uh, ECC eighty three for the phase inverter and uh, and two of them for the preamp. That would leave us with uh, three ECC eighty three tubes. And I'm thinking about placing the face inverter tube uh, slightly to the back. Like one is here and the other one is here. Another one is here. And here I would have the capacitor. Okay. 
But uh, let's measure the distance between uh, between those. Twelve point two. Make it twelve and and divide it uh, by three, making a uh, four centimeters. Is at eighty one and uh, the capacitor would be somewhere here and uh, then the phase inverter ECC eighty three. Let's make it in line with this one At the same distance from the chassis edge uh, as uh, as I would have this one, 25 millimeters. So that would be rough design uh, for for this amplifier though i might even go for some compromise like placing the is 81 slightly to the back here And since I would not have a tube but this intersection, I might space those uh, ECC even uh, even further. like five centimeters apart and that would leave us with uh, plenty of space around the capacitor the only problem that uh, I see would be placing those connections inside uh, inside the chassis. But I think I will find a way to do it. So uh, that would pretty much uh, conclude the designing phase of uh, of the chassis. Let's move back a little bit. And uh, the output transformer would be here. The power transformer would be here. Maybe if I put it this way. The EZ81 tube would be a little bit close to the, the power transformer, almost touching it, but it should not be a problem. Same for the output transformer. The output transformer as represented by the bell ends this might be a little bit close for comfort 
I think I might be moving this line uh, slightly away by five millimeters. This should be enough. So this would be the, the hole to the tries. I might also be moving this uh, ISA 81 by 5 millimeters to the left. Center punch time. And uh, let's place the capacitor right in between those tubes in the middle so this would be 77 78 uh, make it 39 millimeters uh, from one tube and uh, and another And uh, let's place it, uh, not on the line, but a little bit to the center. So, looks like we've got this pretty much designed. And that would be the chassis ready for drilling the holes. We'll do it in the next part. Stay tuned for more. Let's carry at Caritac Electronics making an amp. And we'll make it sound awesome. See you.